met Danny fall 2007 at the University of Florida. We had a class, Dr. Stopka's class, and I was sitting in the back and he walked in with this orange shirt and white shorts and um, he came in with his gym bag and his meal already prepped and he sat down in front of me and he was gorgeous. He started coming out to all of my chapter events, just always around and I just really like learned to like really enjoy being around him. But after we graduated, kind of everyone took their place and went off in life. But I always would see him around, like at the day parties and stuff. But anybody who knew Danny knew he was a little wild, so there was no way that we were going to date back then because, yeah, no. I was able to uh, convince Heidi to go on a date with me um, after all the, the day parties I've seen her at. And, um, I, I would approach her the incorrect way. And then finally, uh, I was able to approach her the correct way and um, told her I was, I was gonna cook for her. Well, luckily, Dexter had an event to do or something and he was gone and I was using his apartment uh, because she lived in Orlando and he lived in Orlando. And uh, I made a nice dinner for her, um, linguine with clam sauce, crab cakes and champagne and strawberries. After that though, she kind of went cold turkey. I think that she was preoccupied or we just weren't on the same page or maybe she thought that I was um, trying to run game, I'm not sure. It was a few days later, maybe a week later, I seen Tiffany um, post something on Facebook saying that she needs her bestie to have a good man and uh, she's trying to be date planner or hook Heidi up with somebody. So I took offense to that. So I'd comment um, under that post that she uh, put on Facebook. And then I guess Heidi realized maybe that I was serious or not sure. So we ended up talking, I think that night or soon thereafter. And then she actually opened up and said, you know, she didn't know if I was for real. And I had to confirm that, hey, I actually am looking for something uh, more serious than just having a good time. Uh, there are so many times when I knew Danny was the one. Anybody who knows me know that I'm like really family oriented. So um, I wanted to marry a spouse that could be around my family. So it made me really happy when Danny was the first one to initiate, okay, I want to meet your parents, I want to go to church, and like that became our like tradition when I lived in Orlando. Like he would always initiate it, he would always be around, and like just knowing that he can like go places with my dad without me being there, like he even would like be in the bed with my mom just watching TV, like that sold my heart. I think for men, I don't necessarily know there's like a stamp that you say, oh this is the one. I think there's scenarios that you go through or you have certain criteria that you think you're supposed to have in a woman. Um, and, and she met a lot of the criteria that is not necessarily important. I mean, looks are important, and, and but that's not everything. So she's extremely intelligent. Um, she's a very strong woman. But one of the, the more important things is she has a, a family structure. Um, and if you know me, I don't have that. Um, so I was extremely, um, attracted to that. There's also another time where I knew he was the one because um, around our second and third date, I realized that I was like, that's intolerant. And um, it was the first time I had her around uh, friends and we were at a little party and uh, tell the story. She, she, she had to go missing for a while. Everyone thought she was being rude and wanting to be on her phone, but um, you know, she has this uh, desire and love for uh, <laughs> uh, for a steak and shake, and unfortunately, she 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 got a milkshake and it did not sit well with her that night. I blessed the house that night, and he still stayed with me. So. We're, we're not gonna get into the unbuilt house story <laughs> that she used the bathroom <laughs> in. And it really helps also that you know she was going into a good career. She has a lot of uh, the morals and, and because her structure and belief system is based on Christ and that's where I feel like um, where I get my strength from and where I'm at in life so 
to know that another person has that same belief system that was knowing that um, you're equally yoked, so. And like throughout it all, like to know that I started grad school with him and like ended it with him, like he was there. Cause I was like, well, I passed this semester, but I don't think I can go through the next semester. And he's like, but you can and you will. Like even when I wanted like my dream job as a hand therapist, it's like the odds of that are against me. He's like, well, just speak it, it's yours. So that's what I love the most about him, but it doesn't hurt that he also is a, like an amazing cook too. Having to speak to her father uh, actually was not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Um, I was at the house. I don't know if I got there early because we were staying there or if I just went there for that particular uh, topic to talk to him about. Uh, but Mr. Rogers is always outside working and I was following him around like a little puppy dog. And then I had stopped and said, you know, Mr. Rogers, I have something very serious that I wanna talk to you about. And um, I told him, I said, you know, I love your daughter and I'm very thankful for everything that she's done for me and what you guys have done for me. Um, I would really love her to be my wife. And he asked me a question. He said, you know, do you love her? Will you treat her right? And obviously my question is yes and yes. Um, and, and I asked him if I was good enough for her because that's something that, I, you know, I wanted to make sure that he is okay with me marrying his, uh, his daughter. And um, we, we come from similar backgrounds, so he, he was very thankful um, that I was marrying his daughter, which I'm, I'm really proud of. And then that has to go with now trying to find a ring. We went ring shopping and uh, we went to a few different places. And I knew there was a particular ring that she liked. And I, to be honest with you, there's a, a style that I, I liked as well. There was a particular ring that we looked at that has a my story. It tells you when the ring was found, or when it was cut, when it was set, and you know the whole process of what a, a diamond goes through. It just so happens one of the dates that I think it was when it was cut was our first date. Um, and she started crying, or not crying, she teared up. So, so I just nodded so lot and said, yeah, right, you know, we can't get that, and kind of moved on. And then uh, I took it to um, her father's house um, and asked him if I could keep it there in their safe and showed him the ring. And uh, it's kind of, I thought there was gonna be a different reaction from him, um, you know, that, he didn't seem extremely excited, you know, he said, oh, the ring is beautiful, she's going to love it. Uh, but he seemed kind of distant. And so I, I kind of thought that maybe he was disappointed, but I knew he wasn't disappointed. I think he just realized, oh, this is serious. My, my daughter is getting married. This is not my baby girl anymore. So um, and I had to respect her. The first time uh, we went to Disney World and a proposal. Just enjoyed Disney World and uh, had a good time. Came home, didn't happen. Her mood didn't change, so I'm not sure if she didn't think anything. Um, then the next time we went, um, I was going to propose. Um, this was very, very nerve wracking. Um, I think that I hid those nerves very well. Um, so I had to get the ring from the father, her father. So I asked myself, well, what am I going to do with the ring, with the box, and how am I going to hide it so she knows, she doesn't know that I have it? I had wore my tights that day and had to put it in an uncomfortable place all day long, walk, walking around the park. So the other part of it is that I had uh, Dexter and Reggie. They were um, photography and videography, and they were kind of following us around, um, trying to let them know I'm on track. and. Um, I was getting prepared to ask the question and telling her how beautiful she is and how much I love her. And then a couple stopped and said, hey, can you take a picture of, uh, of us? And it threw, threw my whole mindset off of what I would needed to say or my thought process. And after I took the picture, 
then I was trying to figure out how do I get back in the mood because I already I just told her how much I love her and how beautiful she is and basically I just said the same thing again and got down on a knee and had to get the, the box from the uncomfortable spot and when I got down on the knee nothing came out I, I, I was not able to have any words come out of my mouth so then I got back up had tears in my eyes and was like, you know how much I love you. Um, and she had the look that, I don't know, she was extremely confused. And so I was so confused. I'm like, you know what to say, say it. And I got back up, kissed her. I was teary eyed and she's like, why are you crying? And then I got back down and I said, I love you. I want you to be my wife. I said, will you marry me? And then everybody that was around was flipping out and going crazy and clapping. And luckily Dexter and Reggie were able to, to get that part. I didn't even notice that Dexter and Reggie parked right in front of us. Like two cars down. Didn't even know it until like on our way back. And so apparently when Danny was going to the bathroom, apparently like Dexter and Reggie walked by me, didn't even see it. And Danny was like, yeah, there was a point where you looked back and I was, and Dexter was behind me, didn't even notice it. Like I was so, I guess, especially cause when we were walking towards the castle, um, the song um, Dreams Come True comes on. And so he's like, oh, th this is such a nice song. Let's go take pictures by the castle. Like I was just totally oblivious. And two, my nerves were on edge because this is the first time I ever rode a roller coaster. <laughs> and let me tell you how my wig almost got snatched on this roller coaster and I'm like, you know what? That could have been so wrong. You're getting down on one knee and all I got is braids. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure snatched. that would have been able to happen. <laughs> the thing what I love most about Heidi is um, she, she's extremely family oriented and uh, you know, her, her thoughts and her beliefs are all based on Christ. That, that is her support system and her belief system. Um, that's. Luckily, and her family has that as well. I love that he's such a God-fearing man. Um, the love that he's so, 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 so um, supportive. Like, I had a really rough year. Like, 2016 was, like, rough. But he was always there. He was always very, very encouraging. Like, and even when I would get down on myself, he was the person that always, like, well, you can do it. That's how you're built. Like, you're made to do this. You know, she, she makes the comment, oh, we're going to have a great empire together. Yeah, if I have somebody like that on my side, then yeah, we, we are gonna have a great empire.